Good evening. My name is Dieter Unruh, and I'm a resident of 17 and Promenade. I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord Mayor, Mr. Chairman, and members of Council for the opportunity to speak tonight. I believe this is an extremely important topic, and I wanted to take us back to the elements of the official plan, because I think this is really an important consideration and where our deliberations should start. This is being presented to you as an amendment to the official plan. Uh, I'm going to submit to you that this is more like a major and fundamental change to the official plan. This development is massive. It is in contradiction of many elements of the official plan, and I just want to run through them in order that we all understand what exactly we're talking about here. The V official plan goes into great detail in both the residential section and the commercial section to make sure that we avoid the residential commercial conflict. And there's very specific verbiage, and I'd like to run through some of those statements in order that we all understand exactly what the official plan puts in place in order to prevent the kind of conflict that I truly believe this development is going to cause. So first of all, let me take you back to a little bit of the high-level statement. Um, the official plan is stated as being a formal statement of public policy. So it is the law, if you will, it is certainly a reflection of provincial law and municipal law as it stands in Niagara Lake. So let me start by talking a little bit about the residential section of the official plan. And even when the official plan talks about development in a residential area that will expand the residential character of that area, it says, special care will be taken in established residential designations to maintain a low density character. New development will be accompanied by analysis demonstrating that there will be minimal impact on surrounding neighborhoods. It goes on with a number of very specific goals and objectives. Number three, under that heading says, to ensure that new development or redevelopment is appropriately located and compatible with surrounding land uses. So there's a, an effort there to cite the need for compatibility. Statement five says, to ensure that existing housing and existing residential areas shall be preserved and improved. Statement seven says, to encourage infill residential development of vacant or underutilized parcels of land where such uses will be compatible with existing uses. And statement eight says, to minimize the potential for compatibility problems which may result from the mix of residential and non-residential uses. So it's very clear that the residential part of the plan says that we're going to work to keep the residential parts of the town residential. Let me move to the commercial section of the plan, where it says, under statement five on page 76, to encourage growth within designated commercial areas. This is not a designated commercial area. As you heard earlier on, it is zoned residential, and it is uh, obviously a long-standing residential area within our town. Another objective stated under point number eight is to prevent the intrusion of commercial uses into residential areas. It also says an objective is to minimize the impact of commercial uses into residential areas. And it, uh, it says on page 80, statement three, that the character of each commercial area and the character of its surrounding uses shall be considered so that a cohesive character may be promoted in keeping with the adjoining areas. And again, that's very difficult to do when we're talking about a massive development that is going to be bordering on a residential area. There's also a special recognition in the official plan of the pillar and post, given that it is uh, outside of some of the commercial areas in town and kind of stands alone in that section of town. And uh, it was specifically cited when the new official plan was put together. And there is a statement regarding the Polar and Post which says, 
on page 77 that it is not intended to form a node for expanded general commercial activity. In other words, Pilgrim Post was in existence, it was grandfathered in, and uh, it is specifically cited as somewhere that is not intended to be a site for further commercial development. So we have a situation where the commercial plan is telling us that, or the, pardon me, the official plan is telling us that we want to keep the residential and the commercial parts of the town separate. It says it over and over again, and this is for good reason, because there are conflicts that are going to arise when we put them too close together. In addition to that, the official plan goes into some detail on the kind of justification that is necessary for any development to proceed. And I want to highlight just a few of the shortcomings of the justifications that were offered by both the developer and the consultants working with the developer, the developer in order to justify this proposal. So first of all, on page 30 of the official plan, the plan calls for something that justifies the need and the desirability of the use. So we're looking for a need within the town. Do we need another hotel? Do we need a massive development? And then, do we want a massive development? So PKF consultants were enlisted, and there's a, a very extensive report. It's uh, many, many pages included with the proposal. It is, however, uh, I believe, totally inadequate for what's being uh, proposed here. I want to start by pointing out that the data in this report was gathered in the year 2007. It's four years old. During those four years, we've gone through one of the worst economic downturns in history. Tourism demographics in Niagara and the Lake have changed significantly as currency fluctuations and the passport situation have impacted people coming to Niagara and the Lake. And it is also important to recognize that the town and the official plan specifically look for updated information. And that's specified again within the plan, updated information. So we're, we're really working with something that is four years out of date. And just as an example of how not applicable this report is, I want to point out that it adds 20,000 room nights annually to the demand in Niagara Lake based on Project Niagara. Project Niagara, as you recall, no longer exists and is not being actively pursued. So this is the kind of distortion that is created in this report, not because it was poorly prepared at the time, but because it is out of date and no longer useful in assessing whether this project belongs in town. The official plan also calls for a traffic study. There is a traffic study included with the proposal. However, I do want to point out that there are some major flaws in this traffic study. It has already been alluded to in the, in the prior dialogue, but it's important to recognize that this traffic study was conducted in the month of November, which I do not believe is representative of what our town is all about. Pretty quiet around here in November. Um, the other thing is that the, uh, the traffic study does not comprehend the current site plan. It does not deal with the underground parking, which is uh, proposed to be installed on the property, and therefore does not address any of the concerns that this might cause for the residents. And it also uh, completely does not consider the parking or accommodation for buses on the property. Um, in the public meeting, the developers indicated that they do not expect any buses to come to the property. So on the one hand, we are told that this is going to be a landmark that people from far and wide are going to come and see, yet on the other hand, there is no accommodation for buses either on the property or nearby the property. Another specific objective of the official plan is that the potential effect of the proposed development on the financial position of the municipality is supposed to be articulated. So it's very interesting to note that the PKF consultant report did a very good job of this. You have to get to page 80 of that report in order to find the fact that they actually indicate that a residential development will offer
offer a greater financial incentive to the town directly than a commercial development. There is about a $50,000 property tax advantage for the town by creating a residential development on this property as indicated by the developer's own consultant. I also want to point out that there is a requirement for a planning analysis. And I think that uh, one of the most important elements of a planning analysis is the mitigation. How do we make this proposal fit into the environment that they're proposing? How do we make it work given the proximity of neighbors and the fact that it is a residential neighborhood? And I think you would find that there are very few constructive ideas for mitigation. And I will leave you with the thought, it was shared with me by a resident, it's very hard to hide a 100-room hotel behind a hedge. There's one other thing that I, I do want to uh, point out, and that is that uh, the official plan is also pointing out that we want to recognize the existing commercial structure of the town as an important part of the municipality that should be protected from any significant impact from future proposals for major commercial development. So in other words, given that we have a very lively commercial structure in town, we want to preserve that. We don't want to jeopardize that. And I only leave you with one more comment. Given what I said earlier about the study that was no longer applicable and totally out of date, I think there is definitely a need here to go back and assess whether a project of this magnitude would in fact be detrimental to the existing businesses within our town. So I just want to leave you with the thought, this proposal contradicts our official plan. It goes against the intent of the plan. It goes against the specific directions of the official plan, and I truly do not believe that it fits into the environment that the developer is proposing that it be built in. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Adam.